Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to talk about 10 meters. Uh, the question has come up, uh, what kind of antenna to use for 10 meters? Uh, we've got, uh, let's see here, this is Paul Shoney, uh, who does not give his call sign, who wants to work uh, with a dedicated antenna for 10 meters. You can work 10 meters as a technician, and uh, that's something that a lot of people don't know if you happen to have the right radio for it. You can do CW from 28.0 megahertz up to 28.3 megahertz, and then you can do sideband from 28.3 megahertz to 28. 0.5 megahertz. Now down in that CW portion, you can also do FT8. Uh, you can do uh, all the other various modes. You've got pretty unlimited types of things that you can do uh, within your bandwidth. Most of the 10 meter uh, voice traffic is going to be in that uh, technician section 28.3 to 28.5 uh, plus maybe some more from 28.5 up to 28.7 so that's where you're going to find the activity I'd start around 28.4 and move out from there with today's software defined radios you can get a very nice uh, graphic display of the entire spectrum and you can see where the signals are and go pounce on them and of course don't forget to call CQ Okay, so this is different from 2 meter FM where you might say your call sign uh, or say call sign and listening or something like that. You actually call CQ on 10 meters. Now, there are lots of ways to get on 10 meters, uh, all of which involve an antenna, of course. So let's talk about these antennas. The two options that is, are referred to here that Paul talks about are a uh, dipole and a vertical dipole and you can do either one they both work fine all the normal things that apply to dipole antennas apply uh, here now what is the optimum height for a 10 meter dipole it's a half wavelength or five meters that's 15 feet that's not very much okay so it's very easy to get an antenna to its optimum height now, if you want to put the vertical dipole, you can put it about anywhere. Let's take a look at a couple things on the whiteboard. If you put your antenna up too high, uh, let me show you what happens. When you have, this is your radiation pattern for a dipole looking from the side. This is a slice through. They're supposed to be the same size. Okay. You have a uh, angle right here. And the angle uh, that uh, you're looking at here is the lowest angle that you will get. Now what happens if you, this is at one half wavelength or lambda high. Okay. Now what happens if you go higher? no point in going lower when you know only 15 feet is what you need here but if you start going higher than that you start getting a little bit of a low it actually goes lower but then you start getting power up here this is called lobing and it is common for antennas that are too high so yes this is a little lower but you're losing power here on a high angle of attack okay so to get the most power out the optimum is a one half wavelength high for optimum now what about that vertical okay you can make yourself a 10 meter vertical put it anywhere it doesn't need radials Okay, so this is 10 meter antenna. It's 15 feet long, approximately. You, you can figure it out with 468 over the frequency in megahertz. Okay. Um, and then this is your coax pulled away from the antenna for a while. 
so that it doesn't affect it too much. The vertical has a somewhat lower radiation angle because it's reflecting off of uh, ground. You've got ground down here. You can put this any height that you want, the higher the better, okay? It's a complete antenna. It does not need radials to do something like that. You can put that up. Now, if you want to do just a ground-mounted antenna, okay, you can do, it's quarter wave, a quarter of 10 meters is 2.5 meters, okay, times three is, let's see, six and a half, nine feet, nine feet tall, okay, and then put some radials out. And this will give you a nice low radiation angle, okay. It, yes, it, it, I mean, I know that 10 meter antennas are, in general, smaller than other antennas. Now, that's great, but don't forget the same principles apply. A dipole is a dipole is a dipole, regardless of the frequency. If you've got a dipole that is a half wavelength long and a half wavelength in the air, you will get not only the same pattern, but are you ready for this? The same capture area. Okay, it's just the way dipoles work. Okay, and you can do the same thing with ground mounted verticals, or you can go with a vertical up a little higher, you can go with a vertical dipole. Okay, so that gives you lots of options. Is there anything going on on 10 meters right now? And the answer is yes, the sunspots are getting better. You're going to find your best propagation during dawn and dusk, and also um, in the middle of the day, usually early in the afternoon. Uh, it's going to get to the point here where we're start, going to start getting more 10 meter activity, but this particular sunspot cycle does not really look any better than the last one. So we're not going to get on stuff on 10 meters 24 hours a day, but there is still some stuff out there. Now don't forget, in addition to normal ionospheric propagation, you will also get um, scattered uh, E uh, from the scattered layer. You will get uh, all sorts of other kinds of things uh, that can happen with funny propagation. You can get some odd meteor scatter, You can, although you normally go up to VHF for that. You can get what's known as auroral propagation, where the aurora, aurora actually bounces signals back to you. So that stuff starts to play at 10 meters. 10 meters is right at the very high limit of HF. It's almost VHF, and it starts to share some of the attributes of VHF. So it's a very interesting band. No discussion of 10 meters would be complete without discussing 1010 International, which is an organization devoted to those who like to operate on 10 meters. Doesn't mean you have to operate exclusively on that, but they give you a nice handy 1010 certificate with a number on it, and when you talk to other hams, you can exchange 1010 numbers. I had one once, I've long forgotten what it is, but it's uh, still around. So have fun on 10 meters. If you're a technician, definitely do that. So there you have it. Now, if you'd like to help support this channel financially, I'd appreciate it if you would, because you need to pay an assistant, you need to pay for camera equipment. We just upgraded the internet, uh, things like that. Please uh, go to decastler.com support. There are ways there that may work for you, like Patreon or PayPal or a one-time tip or whatever you might like to do. I am very happy uh, when I get support from uh, the fans because that keeps this channel going. Without it, I wouldn't be able to do this. So thanks so much for your support. Thank you for also supporting this channel with your comments and questions. If you have a question, send it to Ask Dave. That's all one word, Ask Dave at ARRL dot org, O-R-G, ARRL dot O-R-G. And that will come to me. And I'll either answer it here or maybe just with a quick email or maybe um, in the Ask Dave column in QST or something like that. If you ask a question as a comment, I may or may not see it. I really do try to get to the comments, but there's just too many. 
Um, but perhaps other people can answer your comment, or if you know the answer to somebody's question, go ahead and give them that answer. So until we next meet, 73.